Lord, word of the Lord has come to you. The word of the Lord came to you, Francie. The word of the Lord came to you, Vainant, Louis. The word of the Lord came to you. It's, it's already there. And you know the word. You've heard the word. It came to you. Second principle. Arise. What is this arise? Arise based on the word. Is position yourself for obedience. When your mind is transformed, you are positioning yourself so that you are able to be doing His will, so that you can be obedient. Amen? Only through His word you can be obedient. Yes. Arise is position yourself for obedience. Arise is like, you know, some people who went to the army, attention. What is that? Attention is, corporal is going to say something. Attention is, be alert. Something's going to happen now. And if he says, to the right, immediately. If he says this, if he says that, whatever is going to come from his mouth now, that needs to happen. That is arise. That is like attention. Give me your attention now. And it's not even a different word than just attention. Anybody in the army? Any of you or two of you was in the army? No. Oh, any of you brandvorters was in the army? No. Okay. <coughs> that is what God is saying to you. If he word, His word really comes to you, you will give your attention. If you respect the word from the corporal, you will stand on attention. I'm here on attention to do whatever the corporal tells me to do. Hello. The word came. Arise. Afrikaans, mark jou klaar. Prepare yourself to be obedient. Give attention. What did we say? Vaak, ne? Give strict attention. Arise. Third one. Go. Go to Nineveh. Go to wherever God will lead you. There's a word over your life. You know the word. You must stand on attention, ready for that what God has for your life. Thirdly, you will go for whatever God has for you. It doesn't mean go to the nations there in Italy, but go to your neighbor, go to your wife, go to your son, go to your grandfather. Go to the man next to you. Go to the person behind you in the, in the supermarket. And fourthly, and proclaim. And proclaim that what God is saying to you. Proclaim. <clears throat> it's not just make a suggestion to them. Sometimes under the, the heading of friendship evangelism, we, uh, we make suggestions to people. But first of all, there must be a proclamation in my heart. I can ask him normally. I doesn't need to say, you're going to burn in hell, turn or burn. No. It could be in my heart that I will proclaim, and by faith I proclaim this to this man. You are precious to Christ. He wants to speak to you. You need to hear him tonight. He has an appointment with you. You need to turn to God tonight. You know your life is not right. This is your time. This is your hour. This is your moment to respond at this moment. Hello? Proclaim to that person. This is his day of redemption, of salvation. Amen. Amen. Four facet. God speaks to Jonah. Word of the Lord come, arise, go, proclaim. Our response. Well, let's say only Jonah's response, not we. <clears throat> hmm? Verse 3. The word of the Lord came, and for his first reaction, but. But Jonah. When there's a but, it's against what was said. You with me? It's not supposed to be a but. There's no excuses. There's no justification. There's no justification. There's no reasoning about what was said. If God's word said so, it's just yes, and then we go. But this is a response against God's word. But, secondly, Jonah rose up he prepared himself for something. He gave attention for something. To flee. He prepared himself to flee. 
not prepared himself to be obedient. He didn't position himself to be obedient and then went to be obedient. He positioned himself to be disobedient. He positioned himself to flee from God's word. Oh, we will not do that on purpose. But just, so by the way, I don't have time for this. You know, I'm having all these deadlines. And God wants you to speak to that person. God wants you to just get out to him, to God, and deal with that issue in your life. Finally, to deal with these things. God wants you to sit with that leader and say to him, this is the rubbish I need to deal with. I want a final breakthrough now. Hello? But prepare yourself for disobedience and flee from God's calling on your life. It will just automatically happen. You're not choosing it, but if you're not yield to his calling to go to people and to make a difference in their lives, you're automatically walking in this, but, but I position myself in disobedience and flee from my calling. No, my calling is different. I'm more a servant. Go make disciples of all the nations. Be the light. Preach the gospel. Personal representatives, plead with people. Beg them to be reconciled with Christ. How will that happen? You will open your mouth. Hello? And people will accept the word. How will they be saved if you don't hear? But he rose up, positioned himself for disobedience. He, he fled. He found a ship. He fled to Tars, Tarsus, Tarsus from being in the presence of the Lord. And went down to Joppa and found a ship. You will always find a ship taking you away from God's will. The devil will make sure there is a ship. You and your husband have an argument. There will be a ship of justification. A ship of somebody that is, oh, what's happening in your life? Just somebody giving you a hug. I see you are not feeling well today. And some seed of destruction is placed in your life, is put in your life. Uh uh, don't go that way. Don't take that ship away from God's presence, away. The deception, away from where God's perfect will is. That ship's all laying there. Where will that ship of bitterness take you? That ship of fear. I need the security. Oh, you were open for input, but suddenly, you know, yeah, that guy is saying all this and saying all that, but look at this, look at that. And I'm having this fight with people in my head. You are fighting with the leader, you are fighting with your husband, your, your child, your, your parent in your head. Something is wrong. You are not in God's peace. You are not in a place with His perfect will. You are running for a ship. And that ship will be there, it will be provided, and sometimes we will be, could be so deceived that we think it's God's provision. He's confirming exactly what you felt. And here God has provided a, a a ship. You see, it's not God's calling for my life. Here I'm so at peace in the ship God, that my Lord has provided. Meanwhile, it was sent by the enemy to take you away from his presence and his calling on your life. <clears throat> Goes on. That was the first, third one. Hey? Flee with the ship provided by the enemy. It was going to this place Okay, but the Lord sent out a great wind. It started, the second part, <coughs> in Jonah's response started with, but Jonah rose up. But Jonah did something opposite of the word of God. And then there's another but, but the Lord. And that is the part that is not always so nice for us. When the Lord brings another but, you know. Yeah. Maar Jonah, en later... Maar die Heere het ook iets gedoen. But the Lord sent out a great wind upon the sea, and there was a violent tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken. 
And then we, these guys were very afraid. And each man cried out to his God. And they cast the goods that were in the ship into the sea. Everything. <clears throat> all the goodies into the sea. To lighten it up. To lighten it from them. But Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep while all this was happening. Okay, that's the fourth point. But Jonah, he rose up, positioned himself in disobedience, flee, fled from his calling, provided with a ship that the enemy gave him, the devil gave him. And the fourth one was to preach or proclaim. Where is he? Sleeping. So you can run from your calling fast asleep in the midst of a storm, in the midst of people crying out to their gods. And that's not like out there, people that feel they are okay. How do they cry out to their God? Cry out is, I put this intensity in it. I work with intensity. I work very hard so that there's enough finances. That is crying out to the God, my mom. There's this fear that the budgets will not be in place. So I put all my everything in to be faithful. It could be, but it could be a place of intensity because of fear. And it's all in the name of fear. <clears throat> There's a calling on your life. You start with a but. You start with reasoning against what God just said. Receive it as a child. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Amen. Let's say, God said, God said it. I believe it. I believe it. That settles it. Okay? There's no but. But Jonah. But Jonah. Position for disobedience. Go with the ship provided by Satan, by the devil. And then God comes. But God comes and shake that. But everything around them is shaken. Destruction can happen to the people around them. You are called to bring people to the presence of God. But you can bring distraction to people also. When you're out of his will, the devil calls you into that ship so that that people's lives on that ship will also be destroyed. They may be most probably in God's calling. You don't know. They're on the way to a place where they could be having salvation. Yes. Don't destroy people's lives by walking out of the will of God. By running from your calling, away from your calling, you will have impact. Impact to destroy people or impact to bring people unto Christ. But you will have impact. If you like it or not, your life will have an influence on people. Fast asleep instead of proclaiming the truth while the world is crying out to their gods in the crisis. You can walk there. You can be in the shop. We use this example many times. But you know, you can stand there in line and you are irritated with this long line of people. You just want to pay this for this bread and milk and Coke and whatever. And you are irritated, but you are fast asleep because behind you is a lady crying out to God and saying, God, this is my last money that I have for me and my son where my husband walked out on us. And this is, this is it. If you are there, Lord, you need to provide. I don't know anything whatever more. You stand fast asleep in your boat just right in front of that lady. Instead of awake in your calling, giving strict attention, understanding what God wants to do. And say, lady, God is just saying to me, I must give you a thousand rand or I must buy you a lot of groceries. Go and fill one of these what do you mean, good? Trolleys. With a lot of food, come here, I need to buy it for you. Hello? Are you fast asleep in that ship? Or are you going for your calling? <coughs> Third one. That was our response, or Jonah's response. Now the third time. God is dealing now with you. The word of God comes, not now, from God himself. The word of God comes through circumstances. This time. First time, you don't want to listen in his presence. Second time, you will have to learn through circumstances. First, from the mouth of God. Secondly, through circumstances. 
Jonah 1 verse 7 and 8. And they each said to one another, Come, let us cast lots that we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. Jonah, something needs to happen with you. Then they said to him, Tell us, we pray you, on whose account has this evil come upon us? What is your occupation? Where did you come from? And what is your country and nationality? Identify yourself. Hello? There's a word that is coming to you through circumstances. How are you going to rise up? How are you going to rise up to tell us what are you supposed to do? And he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear and worship the Lord, the Lord of the heavens, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, What is that that you have done? For the men knew that he fled from being in the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. <clears throat> the word came. He had, to, he had to reveal. He had to reveal. Guys, there's actually a word over my life. There's actually a word over my life. You can run, but you can't hide. You can run. And then it's all a mess. It's all a mess in that city, all a mess there at the workplace. You're just praying to get out of there. But it's a mess, but you are supposed to make the difference. Hello? The word came through circumstances. Rise up. And this time for repentance. Verse 12. And Jonah said to them, Take me up and cast me out into the sea, so shall the sea become calm for you, for I know that it is because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. This is a man that is coming to a place of repentance. I surrender. Not, I hear the word, but I go my way. <clears throat> There's a word that I'm reminded of through my circumstances. I turn. And even if I'm restored to the fullness of that calling, I don't know. But I surrender. Not for my sake now. Oh, in selfishness, I said, no. That people can go to hell, whatever. I'm not going to preach to them. I have my way. Suddenly, there's some repentance. He's thinking about the people in the ship. He could have kept silent. Hello? And many people would keep, Christians would keep silent. <clears throat> but meanwhile, they are the problem. Not the people around them <clears throat> calling out to all their gods and losing everything. Oh, you see, all these guys calling out to all these other gods. It's because of them that we are in such a curse, our nation. Because of all these people calling to other gods and not to the Christian God. Meanwhile, it's about you not standing up in your calling then they would be silent and they would respect your God. Hello? Let us not be deceived in these times. Let us not be deceived. Let us be giving strict attention. Let us walk in the season. It's an awesome, excellent, exciting time if we know how to work with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Rise up for repentance, Jonah. He had the guts, to be honest. He had the guts to come out in the light. He didn't have to. Third one, go. Where's the go? Go and die in the sea. But then, praise the Lord, verse 17, Now the Lord has prepared and appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah. It must probably a whale. It's not possible for anything else. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Three days and three nights. Okay. God will miraculously provide for you when you come in repentance. He will miraculously provide for you into, into the place to do His will. You stand ashamed with a lot of mess that you've created for your own life. You made a lot of wrong decisions. You feel ashamed about all of that. My brother, my sister, if you can yield to God, if you have the guts for honesty, when you know through your circumstance God is speaking to me, and you repent, and you surrender your life and say, whatever, but I yield myself for what God has for my life. I will not think about me, but I will think about the others around me. God will provide for you, even if it's a fish 
that swallows you up and spit you out in another place. Come on, man. Where have you heard about such a story? Are you here? Just give your brother or husband this holy smack, you know. Are you here? <coughs> okay. What are we saying? <coughs> God is committed to the call on your life. God is committed to the call on your life. God is committed to that Nineveh to be saved. God is committed. It's not for your sake, Jonah. It's for the sake of Nineveh. Hello? Otherwise, Jonah can die and go to heaven, man. No problem. It's not like a curse. Just drown and go to heaven. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> but why is there supernatural provision? Because you have a calling. You could have died yesterday on the road, man. Finish. Why are you here tonight? It's actually a miracle. Because you have a calling. <clears throat> Why not? A few people, just a few phone calls and press a little bit, bit of knobs and some atomic bombs all over the place and, and earth is through fire, everything. First time through water, second time through fire, everything gone. What is holding it back? There's a God that is in charge. And His purposes, will, He will fulfill His word, what it was sent for. That's it. That's it. You stand on that word. You cling to that word. You eat that word. You are you're going with in everything. 